Bongiorno. Oops. Hello. Oops. Oops. Hello. There we go. Look at this. Full house today. Oh, my goodness. Look at all these people here. I'll be here for a little while anyway. Gallery cool. view. I'm sitting mine to gallery view. That was a whole five minutes early, which is just I unheard of. Saw that. Mm. I know. <laughs> I saw that. You got to enjoy the music for a bit there, Andy. It was cool, actually. I just watched the Elvis movie, so that's why we got to listen <laughs> to Elvis music today. <laughs> so there you go. So we oh, used yeah. to play it. I used to be in a band back when I was younger, and uh, we play high school dances around Saskatchewan. Um, uh, and uh, Jail Host Rock was one of the songs that we would play. So. Always, it was always a crowd pleaser. Always a crowd pleaser. <laughs> Absolutely. Back in the 20s, it was very popular. In the 20s? In the 20s. Oh, Bruce. Well, yeah, you when I too. was 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live land. This is the Clarion Live open webinar. Today is, uh, what is today? It's Wednesday, the 7th of September, 2022. And uh, with me today is everybody. Mike Hansen. Woo. I don't have any hey, applauses here. That's fine. Uh, no, uh, not a problem. Andy. And I'm Woo. not going to think of adjectives for everybody. Woo! Sure. Now they here. Now there's no adjectives. Okay. 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 Yeah. Good to we know. already Please. used them all up. He only had two in the Good hopper. The adolescent <laughs> Bruce Johnson's with us today. <laughs> Thank you, John. The ever amazing Andy Wilton is with us today, and the nostalgic <laughs> Mike Hansen is with us today. There you go. I, 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 I can I thought be, of in something fact, for everybody. And, and, and I have to, music is one of those things that really does uh, do a great job of pushing the nostalgia button. It's uh, something that. True, true, true. Um, you can't hear my Skype going blip, can you? Or can you? I don't think so. No, I hear my Skype going blip. Do you hear yeah, mine no, going blip? A lot of activity no, in the no. CIDC tour. Oh, yours, no. At the moment. Uh, okay. Anyway. Um, um, questions, questions. This is the last uh, open webinar, by the way, until we get back from CIDC. So it'll be three weeks where you guys can get work done instead of hanging around with us. Although, so. some would say. I was actually at the hotel today. I went down to visit Ooh. them. We went through our final run through and oh. made sure everything is going to happen as we want. Had a little walk around, see a couple things. Looking good. Looking figure out how I'm going to plug in the uh, projector. Check, yes. Check that out. I did. I sent you, well, I sent you a note in your sky. Okay. Good, 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 good. Good, good. Uh, I was going to, there's a question, but it, I, is the code from the list box webinars available? List box webinars. Oh, yeah, the old, well, it. mine's right the, yeah. the, You posted it, John, yeah. last week. I posted it, and it's up on the... Uh, Go to clarinlive.com and do a search for the oh my, and it'll be the last <coughs> one has the source code posted. So it's all there for you. I want to show you something real quick, though, before we answer questions. It's short. But I wanted to show you uh, how I set up the, the production because it turned out pretty cool. But I tell you, I cannot press any buttons because it'll change the YouTube, um, what's going on on YouTube, and we don't need to do that. But I'll show you at least the, the layout screen, if you don't mind. Is that okay? Is that okay for everybody? I don't yeah. care. Oh, Pre yes. <laughs> preview the world. I don't care if it's okay or not. I'm going to do it. So hold on a second. Let me find it. Here it is. All right. And I'm going to uh, Ooh. spotlight myself there. There you go. Okay. So this is all on an iPad. And this is this is the entire production to make it easy for me to do or almost anybody can walk up and, and produce this thing, I guess, is how I tried to make it. Oh, but, um, I remember doing it when it was a skill. But, uh, yeah, now it's not skill. <laughs> it's all AI. Yeah, it's all done. Anyway, it's all AI. Um, <laughs> I wish. Um, Back in the day, it was I cannot just touch I. a button, and you can't see me touch the... You could see me touch a button, actually. But, in fact, I am going to touch a, a few buttons. But I can't touch any of these things that say present. See where it says presenter tracking camera, presenter setting camera, presenter wide shot, presenter computer. Those are all the different shots that we can do. And the, uh, the, along the bottom row is our remote presenter because uh, Bob Zanier is going to do a presentation. I think. I haven't uh, heard back from him yet on us doing a test, but I'm sure I will. So anyway, that's that whole bottom row there. It's for remote presenter. And that could be anybody. We could bring in anyone from around the world. 
with the bottom row. But here's the cool part. Um, see at the very top left where it says RIS introduction to any screen? So that's one of the presentations. So if I tap on that, here's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And here's Thursday. And here's all the Thursday schedule. And oh. if I wanted to do the Noyantis processing payments via APIs, I tap that. And it goes back there. Now that's at the top. And now it's all ready to go there. So now this thing that says lower third in the right side, second row on the right side, that's the caption uh, that comes underneath you that says the name and the presentation. So that's all automatically set. Hmm. So the begin presentation is now automatically set for his intro, for the video that shows for his intro. So basically, whenever we do something, we just go here, say it's Saturday, and using font icons with Glyph Painter, and now it's all set to do that presentation. I just press begin presentation, and then we just change the cameras as we go, and then end credits, and we're done. So there you go. Oh. That's, that's all the work that I've been doing for the past several months. Hmm. So I thought it was worth showing. So Bruce, yeah, if you cool, end yeah. up producing something, this is how you do it. Yeah, well, I'm just going to wonder who's going to do the present uh, the the production while uh, you're on stage. But I'm guessing you could do it yourself. I could do it myself. Mary could do it. Um, if she's not, up yeah, I don't know that Ono Soft one. Often Mary and you are both on stage. That's true. That's so true. one of you could sit there and produce while the other person talks. Yeah, isn't that neat? I can produce this from anywhere in the hotel. I can stay in my Very room. Cool. Yeah, yeah, you run up your room bar. on the uh, <laughs> sitting on the toilet. You know, it's all it's all good. Yeah, let's not go there. Okay, Mike. I, knew, I was waiting for it. Sure yeah, yeah, you know, it, 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 it was just low hanging fruit. Hopefully not right. too. Anyway, low. I thought I just wanted to show that off. I guess I would, I just wanted to show off my hard work, and I was very happy um, how it's all turned out. So there you go. Cool. That's where we are today. All right, turn off the spotlight and get back to our regularly scheduled show. Mark has a question. So we can bring Mark in. Yes. I'm going to make myself a panelist. Are we doing it? Hope we don't. Mark, talk to us. Could have just opened his mic. I didn't have to make him a panelist. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mark. Hello. Hey, hey. hey Bruce. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Good, good. Yeah. Um, during uh, my presentation uh, last Friday, David, um, one of the um, viewers, uh, had a question, and um, the answer was yes, which was his question is, can I set a customer secret so that if my data is taken and someone else that's using my app gets it and somehow finds it out, um, they're able to get to it. So I did say that Sequin does support it, and I've been researching it, and I do have it up on the screen here and there's a great few paragraphs, but I don't really, I couldn't figure out how to actually do it. So I thought it might be something that would be easy enough to show in the sample app because I'm just having a difficulty in grasping where do I present that question, okay. save that value and then use it. Yeah. Do -do -do. All right, so let's open it up. So it's not really a sequin thing, it's a my table thing. And obviously sequin uses my table. So they're kind of linked. But you don't need sequin to do this. Okay. So the idea behind a customer secret is that, as you say, it protects the data from anyone who doesn't know the secret. So you might break into the machine, you might steal the data, but even if you have a copy of the same program, so let's say this program here, um, one set of data from this program can't be used in another program without knowing the secret. And the secret is really just a variable. Now, how you get it, how you store it, it's kind of up to you, but let's do a simple one here. So let's just add a global variable. Oh, that's popped up on my window. Okay. Uh, sorry. Pops up under Zoom. All right. So here, let's have a glow customer secret. Okay. 
Okay, so if I assign that to my sequin or my table, whichever ones you've got, custom secret, let it be customer secret. And I'd put it in my table if I have it as well, because uh, there. that's fine. You don't, we're not really using my table directly here. We're using a three second, but, but if you were going to use my table directly, you would put it there and obviously program mm -hmm. secret there. Now it's a variable, so it needs to be set nice and early. Um, and I guess you could set it any way you like. So new procedure, get customer secret. Window. Now this is gonna run very early because you can't access your data until you've got it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make this a simple window. I'll open it up before the frame even. Why not? And enter. access code, make it sound very exciting. And we're gonna go here. And where are we gonna go? We're gonna go, we're gonna go, 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 go. What the hell, I just thrown in there. And then let's call it nice and early in our frame. Login. We're certainly going to do it before the login. So we just do it here. Yeah, go away. That's all there is to it. Hmm. So if I run the program, the first time I run it, the data there's no the data tables don't exist, right? So right. Um, I put in, I put something in there, my access code. Yeah. On, let's say it's one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, then the data tables get created, and the data in them gets created with that password. If okay. they don't use that password, they won't be able to log in. And if they forget that password, all their data is gone forever. Right. Never coming back. Yeah. Okay. And they can't change it once they start entering data because no. all the data that was previously entered is under that previous code, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. That's definitely a, a good starting point for me. Um, one other question I have regarding uh, Sequent Online Server, which is working very well. Um, I issue, um, let's say I have, um, I have a, a customer that downloads the application and they install it and it doesn't have a license. So um, I create a customer record and then um, I can add a license. So let's say I have the same customer being myself, I want to test it on another PC and I install it on the separate PC but I'm using the same three variables, which would be like company name, my name, and my email address. Even though it appears that the license is different, um, it says I get a duplicate key. So the way I got around it was I just changed the date because it gives me three or four things that have to, one of them has to be different. So I changed the, the date of the license expiration. 
you get a uh, duplicate key in the in the license manager or in your program in the license manager when i try to um and i was looking for a variable in there that let's say like a serial number that i'm adding many as the dealer i'm putting in a serial number and unlock code which is going to be unique for every person or every installation mm -hmm. um Let's have a look at the license manager. Uh, you're using the web one, I suppose, yes, but uh, it does, doesn't matter. It's the same tables. Okay. Uh, no, sorry, not the uh, license manager web. <laughs> so let's look at the dictionary. So second licenses, there are a number of keys. Right. That one's unique. That one's unique. So that's on the good, the customer, good. Mm -hmm. So that's the customer details, the mm -hmm. product and the license type and the expiry date. Right. So you can't, yeah, the customer, the product, and the license type, those three together with the date. Yeah. It's unique. So I'm not sure what you're wanting. Um, I was looking for um, another, if, if I kept, I wanted to, another variable in there that would, allow me to make it unique like when there's a like a um by changing the date so so if i'm just using company name like i don't want i wanted to make it simple for the person that's downloading let's say the free edition they could install three or four different machines they may just have the same company name the same username and the same email id um so when i authorize a license registration for that free one um, the only thing that I see that I can do is change the date right now. But if it was based on, um, if I brought up my, uh, my if, they, if they're trying it out on multiple machines, they're not, they would use the same license. They could put their details in the same, they would get the same license. I'm not sure why they need to be a different person or how you would tell them apart. Okay. Okay. The company name in any way is unique. Yeah. Um, So this is the customer's table, is the company name. One company has one license, basically. Right. Yeah, I'm just bringing up uh, the, my- it's Interesting, uh, my, you have to have a company. Hmm. So I bring up my customer, which is just me, and I double click on my customer. Um, and then I look at the licenses and I actually have two permanent licenses I've set aside. And they have unique serial numbers, which gets generated by SOS and would allow me to just use the same company name, email, and my name uh, was I changed that expiry date. Um, uh, it would be nice if it would be a little more convenient if I could use like the external ID as something that's unique. Maybe I could look at that. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I will see. Um, yeah. I probably don't want to fiddle with these data structures too much, but um, maybe. Mm -hmm. But no, at the moment, they're the company, they get a license. Okay. You license a company. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, I could even work with just the date right now or, um, uh, yeah, again, it's just this morning that I had to come up with this solution or or, or process to uh, to do that. Yeah, so. but if it's the same, the same company, same person, it's their license. Yeah. You seem to you seem to thinking this is license per machine. You're okay. trying to you're trying to make it license attached to a machine. It's not, it's attached to a person. Okay. So they could actually so I could, so the so the user so the username could actually just be, you know, machine number two or user number two or uh and then it would make it unique. Yeah, I'm not sure you even can. I don't think you can add multiple companies, uh, multiple users with the same company. The company okay. name seems to be unique. Yeah. 
you know, when I look at my my customer record update, yeah, there's company company but you, phone. But you, but you need to think you you need to think of people, uh, not not machines. Okay. Yeah, that's where I saw it. I would just say they didn't have to have a company name. There you can a, you can log the. There is a thing called the machine ID, and you can put that in your license as well. If you wanted to lock it to a particular machine, you could have an attribute, which is the machine ID. But oh, you would still need a different company. You'd okay. still need a different company and a different name if you're going to okay. do it that way. Okay. All right. Well, I'll fiddle, I'll fiddle around with that. It's a, um, a pressing cool. issue right now because the workaround is, you know, I have the date, but I, now that I know that the, I should look at those keys. I apologize to see why why there was something coming up unique, but uh, but everything else is looking purely purely wonderful. So thank you very much. Cool. Okay. Mike's got a question. Mike, talk to us. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Yeah, not too bad, just off. Getting, getting all set for uh, CIDC? I am indeed. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's one of the, it's it's that anticipation moment. John I am I am about. too, but I won't be there physically. But I'll be uh, there online. We'll so. miss you. I will eat. We'll eat a bourgeois roll in your honor. Ah, thank you. Uh, just uh, I mean, this is maybe a Clarion one hundred and one question, but um, <clears throat> I haven't uh, installed eleven point one Clarion yet, and I wanted to create an eleven point one. Uh, test environment with uh, also with uh, NetTalk 12. And if I create that environment and then take my Clarion 11 uh, accessory templates and, and whatever, copy them into the Clarion 11.1 uh, file chain, um, do they all get picked up automatically? Okay, so you're asking the wrong question. Okay. I know the answer, by the way. <laughs> Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, upgrade. And upgrade. How to upgrade your Clarion install. Oh, look at that. OK, webinar number 655. 655. Watch it. It tells you everything you need to know. How to do this right. If you do it right, it's trivial. And Clarion 11.1 is a bit different than other versions of Clarion where there was a lot of separation from one to the next. With 11.1, it actually overlaps with Clarion 11 a little bit. So things you touch in 11.1 will suddenly affect your 11 as well. So you've got to be yeah. a little bit careful there. Yeah, so that's more to do with the, the IDE layout and stuff than mm -hmm. anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically what you're going to do is you're going to clone your 11 folder and you're going to store 11.1 into your 11 folder, and then you're going to create a version. Watch the webinar. Simple, easy peasy. Once you do it right, you'll wonder how you don't stop. You, you won't stop there. You'll make lots of them, lots and lots and lots. It's okay, so yeah, easy to do. But you just got to do the steps right. Yeah, because Mike, uh, what I don't want to do is is affect my current 11 uh, exactly. folder and anything that's in there. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's you won't. what I was concerned with. That's that's fine. So you create two separate folders, and they'll both run just fine. In fact, you you, you run pick one ID. You don't have to keep switching between them. You switch between the the environments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch the webinar. It'll show you. It's it's oh. so cool. Okay. Um, easy peasy. All I need to know. I must have. It is. That was it's April, all you need to April know. and I must have not been online yeah. then. So. Okay, history, that is a long way back in history. So. Yes, right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's this year, right? I mean, it's just like it's just a few months ago. Doesn't matter. It was it was the spring. <laughs> yes. The summer has happened. That you know, you know what summer year, does to right. your head. It's just yeah. summer yeah. summer is right. gone. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, thanks. Um Jim Morgan is with us. Hey? And he's with us. He's so excited he's here twice. Hey, Jim, are you there? Talk to us. Oh. oh. Come on, Jim. You can. You know you there. can. Yes. How's that? There here? you are. We can. We can hear you. Sorry. We had a call going on at the same time. Um, yeah, I was uh, just calling about this weird parser error I got when we're working with 
uh, source files downloaded from a, repro uh, a repo. So we use um, Bitbucket, we use source tree, you know, to uh, store Clarion environments and download it. And for some reason, everything works fine in my machine, but on a development machine, do the same process I went through as far as downloading the, uh, the Clarion environment and the source code, and the bits get twiddled so that the Clarion parser goes crazy because I think the uh, source tree or bit bucket is replacing, I think, line feeds with carriage return line feeds or vice versa. And so suddenly the parser gets screwed up and you get all these errors, but the errors aren't really pointed at the place where the problem starts. It points somewhere else up in the yeah. template chain or in the include chain and downstream, you know, it throws these weird errors like you can't find an include section or yeah. there's illegal characters in template files. And I don't know if you guys have any recommendations on how you should be managing uh, repos and uh, downloading source and, and doing that. Bit. So I, I can only speak for, for GitHub um, but yes, it matters. The, the line endings are different on Windows and Mac and Linux. There's three different ways one could do it. And so between the three of them, they picked literally all three. So um, source files on Windows have to have carriage return line feed. Uh, on Linux, they only have line feed. On Windows, on Mac, they only have carriage return. Who knew? Um, so your repository is obviously a bunch of text files. It has to have the right line endings. Now, like this is comment? this. Yes, yeah, coming. Carl. Just the uh, so GitHub is all based on Unix, all based on I think a hex ten uh, line ending on everything, and there is extensive writing, Jim, online about how you set your global settings so it knows that when on this particular machine when you bring it down, you want those line endings to be thirteen ten. I tried to follow those. Um, I what I posted out on the comments there is I copied my dot attributes file from I think Davuna and just explicitly list. Uh, I included a link there. Uh, explicitly list. You know, here's all these files are text. My my. So the second line you say text end of line is CRLF, and then you say CLWs are text equates are text ink are text. Again, I think I copied it from Davuna, but there is definitely a global setting in these uh, GitHub tools where you say, "I need, I need you to make it thirteen ten always." Hmm. I'd have to look. But you do that on the the browser level because I even bypassed the source tree and I downloaded directly through a browser down. It, you know, it gave me a zip file the repository. But that zip file is all contaminated too. It has yeah, line that's in. that's going to be Unix based. That's 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 going to be all line uh, line feeds. Um, some, somehow, I, well, I think it's because my attributes say I want this stuff thirteen ten. That maybe when I download my zip files, if you go to my Get GitHub, which I posted, I I'm not, I let me check them. I'll download one right now. I don't um, know if I did anything special I online. Liked, I, think. I like to set the, the attributes. Git dot might, git attributes. Yeah. Let me have a look online here. The um I think I just I might have it might have asked me at some point and I told it it was always going to be 1310. But my Clarence stuff is like I've, everything I upload is 1310 and everything comes down 1310. So it hasn't been an issue. But yeah, might... Jim, you there, there are settings because as people move between um machines these these platforms are trying to be operating system neutral so yeah but the weird thing is is like i use the same user account from both my development machine and this cloud machine think, that we're having the problems with and even though i use the same user account i was getting different results in the two different machines what's yeah. the machine configuration of your git tool the machine so oh, it's on the machine yes it's it's yes it's yes, yes. But I kind of remember with Mike, Mike, you posted Wordle and I downloaded your zip and it, it had all the wrong endings. And I gave you my git, I gave you my git attributes file mm. and you'd stuck that in your repository. And then the zip file was then had the right 1310 endings. Hmm. Yeah, that can, that can help out because I, I run into not only problems with those, but I do occasionally get the uh, errant characters, weird, weird characters showing up in the source, which 
works most of the time but then of course once you go through the whole filter of you know posting it to the repo pulling it from the repo that you know weird things can happen with those characters as well so um, i think the key thing is is find weird characters in your source and get rid of them <laughs> that's probably a good start <laughs> no, point yeah yeah no i mean this isn't weird these are linings so yeah, so jim yeah. on my one now this is this is in my git attributes so i don't know if your bit bucket is the same i've just got that now that must have been a question somewhere because I, I don't think i made this up this just or to detect text files and perform LF normalization. But then in my in my GitHub desktop thing, um, I'm guessing it, there's a setting in there that says, yeah, yeah, I want everything CRLF. Um, okay. I just, yeah, I just searched for Git line endings and docs GitHub configuring, configuring Git to handle line endings. And it goes into the global settings for line endings per repository settings. Yeah, options. Uh, so Jim's using counts. Bitbucket though. You know. Yep, yep. Uh, yes, are, yeah. but, well, oh, but it's yeah. Git. It's Git. It'll be, same stuff. Oh, that's it's right. Gotta be, oh. It's got to be a setting in there somewhere. And uh, because but, in yeah. the Clarion Google. world, we are never going to compile this in a, I don't think, in a Mac environment. <laughs> but I guess, I mean, Bruce, your web stuff will have like Java. Script so this file? JavaScript, yeah. um, but in fact, that doesn't matter either because um, JavaScript isn't Windows, Mac, or Linux. It's something that ends up in your browser. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, all of mine are carried in line feed, but I don't think the browser cares. Um, I think it will, I think the browser just goes, yeah, whatever. It, it's not even, it doesn't care whether it's line feed, line feed, carriage return, Carriage turn it, it it effectively throws them all away anyway. So it yeah, there's just white space to uh, the browser. Yeah, to the browser. So, um, but but in that context, it's actually the browser is kind of the next platform, if you like. So we talk about Windows OS, um, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux as three being three platforms. The browser is kind of a fourth platform. And fortunately, by that day, they kind of got the idea that there was going to be no standard. So they just kind of went with, hey, however you end your line is good enough. We'll take it. Because it's not hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a string theory method. It'll fix it for you. You could make a three-line program that takes in a file, says there's a string theory, uh, it's, uh, line endings, uh, ST colon windows, and then save the file. Um, load ST, and, and that's it. It'll fix it for you. Um, so it's trivial to fix. Um, most editors will fix it if you had to do one at a time. but Obviously, it's a setting somewhere in your client. Just Google for it and find it and fix it. I mean, on the Git, on this GitHub site, it's under GitHub, under, you know, there is a Git engine and it's a command, dollar git config core dot auto crlf is true. And it says for Windows, all you got to do is say auto crlf true. And, and it will work just fine. And so, under source tree line endings for Windows, I search for that, and it comes up with what looks pretty good. In the chat here, there's a whole bunch of things that Mark Sarson has posted, or Mary posted for Mark. Um, I don't see chat anymore. Good job. Yeah, I turned it on. Who can see no, I your... turned it on. I turned it on. Uh, it's under your more button under the Zoom meetings thing there, Carl. Everyone's, everyone's good. Um, so Jim, yeah, it's it's it's, it's in your attributes or it's a setting or something, but it's set per machine. Okay, I think I can find it. I, thanks for the good tips, you guys. Uh, yeah. Gave me a good place to go because I was googling, you know, Clarion and parser errors and stuff like that, and I couldn't get the <laughs> no, right, no. right max. <laughs> no, no. Match of but you're right. I mean, the, the compiler really doesn't like missing cache returns, and it and it's and it's like it it's obviously parsing. Uh, something completely different to what you what you're looking at and i think it hits on the first include statement it goes bonkers because it's everything's wrong it, it never gets any part of the program right right yeah okay real good thanks guys oh i posted a couple links out in those questions if you open the questions again jim yeah i saw that girl help you. You. well no i posted two more but oh yeah oh, okay. Okay. I see what going. good good stuff okay. sure. it's cool. a pain it's <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those things that has to get right. Why didn't that change at some point? You know, we no longer need to advance the line. Well, yeah, it should it'd be so wonderful as one character. 
It's um, well, it, the compiler ideally in a perfect world spots it could be any of those three and moves on. But yeah, yeah. As you're trying to parse, you gotta you gotta skip two characters, and, and it just needs to be one. But it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not. All right. Um, Peter has a question for Mike. Talk to us, Peter. I think he's just trying to get in touch with us. Yeah, and uh, and I actually managed to get him on Skype. And uh, he, he was wanting me to send him some files, and I tried to send them to him, but was sending it to, apparently to one of his old defunct Skype accounts. So we finally um, managed to link up on the right account. The man of many accounts. And a no right. account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, cool. OK, Jim. I received it. Th many thanks. Many thanks. No problem, Peter. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for that. <laughs> Did you see my shirt, John? Because oh, I went down to the hotel today, so I wanted to impress them. So I wore my CRDC 2020 shirt. Hold on a second. Bruce, so, what's that? Uh, oh, stop sharing. Yeah, stop stop sharing. sharing so we can yeah, actually see sharing. a, a yeah, full-sized yeah, version yeah, of you. Yeah, there, there, there we go. There we go. Because oh, I was mm -hmm. down there and I thought, no, I need to impress them. Oh, look, even my cat's looking. She wants to see what, what all the fuss is about. And for those who are super confused, after last week's email, I got, a, I got an email reply back. Someone is super confused. What, it's 2022. Why are we talking about CIDC 2020? Um, all those kind I'm of good so things. Confused. So uh, it's, it's, we just, this is how we filter, you know? And what I want to um, know is why doesn't your shirt say CIDC 2020 in 2022? That's, it should have the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of felt like it's it's going to be forever a piece of history where you look at it yeah. and say, ah, which which shirt has got a date on it, which didn't happen in the year of that conference. It'd be like, And actually, you may have had all these shirts made up two years ago. There is that possibility we didn't. as well. We oh, couldn't. Didn't. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, because we went to get them made. And China had already locked down. China locked oh, down really early. Okay. And it was like, everyone was like, no, we've got no stocks. You can't, can't hmm. buy shirts. So cool. that's when we kind of went, oh, well, no one's getting shirts. It was only a bit later that hmm. um, we came along and and, uh, and and postponed the whole thing. So no, if we had we had the shirts, we, they would say CIDC 2020. Um, the lanyards all say CIDC 2020. They were printed before. Hmm. Um, we had all them, but the, you couldn't get shirts. Couldn't, and they would literally, we went to a whole bunch of different suppliers and they were all, no, nah, it's nothing. Wow. It's all gone. If you can ship shirts uh, and post the price on the website, I know I'd get one. Oh, I, I mean, there must, there's got to be a number, Peter. Hey, I mean, but it, it, sure, I feel like it could be a profit center. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you've got, you've got shipping and handling we've got to deal with. We've got a, you know. The bribes are customs. Recurring revenue. Come on, we're getting recurring in there somewhere. To, we to we want to wear shirts when we're watching this. Zoom, <laughs> Look, I mean, for, I, I guess for, you know, for a hundred dollars, it could probably be done. <laughs> That's a nice shirt too. Yeah, well, it's no, it's really a nice shirt. shirt. <laughs> but <laughs> it should come with a bow tie for a hundred dollars. I'm just saying that uh, by the time the shipping eats so much of it. Um, yeah, it does. We'll and just get a graphic. Uh, That's it. We'll send you. We'll send we'll you a picture. A graphic of them. that we can overlay. Well, you'll see. You'll see us all wearing them, and that's mm -hmm. its own reward. Plus, people who come should get a reward. They should be get something that's unique and a little different. Um, and that's this. So, we have very limited stocks. We didn't get a lot, but I've saved you one should, for John. Um, you should sell them as shirts as a service, Bruce. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure how you would do it. There's but. there's always a number that that makes me interested enough to want to bother to do it, but it, it it's not going to be a tiny number. We're not going to ship them That'll out for twenty bucks. Fee. A monthly Maybe fee can, to keep. If you have shirt, any leftovers, yeah. you can bring them to CIDC yeah. um, next year. Well, I, I might bring them to CIDC, and we could certainly flog them there for a few a few dollars. Yeah. But then, of course, we'll have the twenty three shirts. So you know, but this will be a collector's item by then. So. Gotta say, yeah, it's unique. <laughs> It's the only uh, any conference shirt that doesn't have the year in which the conference took place. I'm planning to sell mine on eBay, so keep an eye open. You gonna have a computer. big bucks? Yeah. yeah, it could be worth two, three hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, Andy, I have a question for you. 
if there are no uh -oh. other questions. It's not an uh oh. Why is it, it's always an uh oh. Let me just share my is screen. It, is it why haven't you sent me that script yet? And I will do it. I will do it in a minute. <laughs> That's not the question, but that was going to be a question. Oh, Carl can share something. Um, 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 let me ask my question first, Carl, and then we'll come to you. Okay, and A. So this is uh, it's a classify it question, which is available for a limited time at www.autosoft.com. For only twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been I've been redoing things on it. Um, and I moved. I had a ribbon bar at the top. I decided to move it to the side, but Very good. I I didn't do it. I didn't do it right because I, I don't want these things the word sideways, obviously. No, you want the yeah. text orientation horizontal. Yeah, um, but that's I wasn't built, sure how to do it. I tried changing some things. I didn't quite get there, so I thought there's a setting in version six for that. Right. You say, how do you want your text auto? Oh, vertical. version six. Yeah. yeah. Thing but do you want the code in the meantime? No, version six. Version yeah. six. <laughs> version Upgrade. six. Upgrade. Up. No, no don't none of this. None of this <laughs> hacky old thing, Andy. No, that's no. not what we do here. Now, I was debating on whether to have text at all because I, you know, there's tool tips. Well, do you know what I do? Uh, what do you do, Andy? I have the icons because people who are familiar with the app, uh, you only need the icons. And then I have it so it can fold out where you will have the button with the, um, with the text. Oh, arrow thing down there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, best of both worlds. I, so I put my toolbar on the top where it belongs myself. Oh no, what, I can't what, what, that, that is oh, so nineteen ninety stuff. I mean that's oh, nobody's doing that anymore. It's all no, on the no. side. All of it. No. Look at no. look at Microsoft Edge. Look at everything. Look at everything. Mm. They're all on the side now. What you need is a hamburger menu so you can hide them away. You see, you can always tell when someone gets old enough and they go, No, it's not <laughs> fiddle anymore. And some people struggled when you got to ruin bars. Some people got struggle when they got to menus. Um, all those word star guys were bitterly disappointed that their slash keys didn't work anymore. But so I've got to say, me. moving the icons to the left hand side doesn't do it for me. Well, well, it does it. And, and you, you know, know why it does my, it for uh, me? Because the ribbon bar was up here taking up a lot of empty space when you could have that space so you could see more lines of code. So I decided to move it over. I, I agree 100%. Uh, in fact, um, I've actually started, uh, well, at some point a couple of years ago, I moved my Windows taskbar to the left-hand side of my screen. And actually, it's the left-hand side of a secondary screen. Uh, and then I upgraded to Windows 11 and started Doesn't swearing profusely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I eventually uh, grabbed a utility called Start All Back, which let me do what I wanted to do. Yeah, I've got the same. I've got it set vertically. And and minute, and small icons so that, that yeah, it's yeah. like lots of things. But Windows 11 to the bottom. I, I, I do get that. I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, as general, we, we UI, moved to the left a while ago now, um, mm -hmm. only because it, the driving factor was a horse racing system. And when you get to a big horse racing meet, the vertical space far outweighs the horizontal yeah. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I do appreciate that aspect very much. So. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I hear you, and, and clearly, but um, yeah, I don't think I like it though. <laughs> well, and I, and think, I have to I admit, if I've got an app with tons of buttons across where the entire toolbar is occupied and the horizontal space is beneficial, then fine. But in most cases, you know, a lot of apps have like three, four, five icons, and then the rest yeah. is this great big blank space. It's desert out there. I'm going yeah, to no, no, I get, I get that. Although hmm. you can put other stuff up there. It's fine. You can put all kinds of things up there. Hmm. Um, yeah, Mike, you can put all kinds of things up there. But Well, two things on yours there, I John, just need to know what to do here. If you want to, <laughs> but bear in mind, okay, if you do switch it uh, to be... Uh, uh, horizontal, which is just one setting, so we can do. Hmm. Okay. Is it per bar? I think it's per bar, so we can do that. That's no problem. It's just one bar. Yeah. Uh, but that your width of your bar is going to grow because what's your first? Uh, well, can't read it. Class, class creator. creator. Class, class yeah. Creator, so yeah. now that's going to be wider than your icon. So all of a sudden, your bar is going to be wider. So that's why I don't have the word. Well, except it'd be narrower because it doesn't got all that text on the left hand side. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, give you that. Yeah, fair point. You can always use a smaller font, too. That's a, you know, 
I, I, so I I'm, think I'm, I'm fine with getting rid of the words. I really am. I mean, I'd, I'd have them. Tilted, yeah, so. you can have a little expand so it actually does go wider and you've got the traditional icon and the button, uh, which is, again, this is not great uh, rocket science to do. Um, and the other is you've got the expand at the bottom of that command bar. Are you actually using the expand? Because if not, you need to turn it off. Yeah. yeah. I need to turn it off because it's something yeah. like moving buttons, which I don't. Yeah, so if you don't do yeah. that, it's, it has a setting on the bar, so it's uh, just turn that off. Yeah, another and version also, six setting, John. Good, good. No, no, that. no, that's been in there for <laughs> a long time. You'll get, <laughs> you'll get that version six though before you leave. So, uh, so. Uh, I, yeah, I gave up. I give up. <laughs> I know there'll be. A but uh, you, want, you also but... want to stretch the bar as well, because you've got a, a bar, you've got a horizontal bar below the arrow, um, which is not, yes. not needed. Yeah, and I'd like to, well, I'd, I'd like, it'd be nice if we went to hold. Well, you, that's your settings. So go to the bar, have it so it takes up the entire width. Oh, okay. So yeah, should we go so ahead and, last... and go to the code here, or do you want me to go to, you go to your bar definition first? I'll get you your text orientation. Although, personally, I will get rid. You're brave doing that in a webinar. Mine always flashes. Okay, you want the bar definition? Mm. Bar so definition. Bars. Bars. Definition there. Onto the. <laughs> um, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, yeah. See, there's a setting on here now for orientation, text orientation. But um, go to content. No, oh, sorry. Next one, appearance. Hang on a second. Where's you? Expand. Go to bar again, sorry. Five or two, okay. I'll find you the setting in a second, then go to docking. Right, turn the top one on and um there you go. Okay. Um turn that left off and just have it docked to the left. Because otherwise you're gonna allow them to pick it up and move it around. So just turn that off. You'll be fine. Turn this off? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. Just go to your bar um, first tab. Okay. Yeah, you've got the position to the left anyway. So it's, it's okay. a bit like the docking in, in, in Clarion. You know, you can say what size can you go to? Same, same principle. Okay, I'll right. get you that. Um, okay, that. Try to think where the other setting is. Options. Ah, show the expand, turn that off because you don't need it. Right. Good. Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. That let's have a quick compile of that. I'm going to try and get you that orientation. Can't remember if it's done at the bar level or control level. Now see, Andy, I had my I classify it was still running. I just compiled it and it it killed the one that was running and now it's compiled and now it's running the new one it didn't ask me yes or no you're you always have yours so it asks you do you want to stop the other yeah yes and i don't know why you have a yes or no when you always answer yes right well that's better i think it's because you didn't find the setting yet to turn it off i haven't, I haven't even looked <laughs> um. <laughs> While Andy's looking, I'm going to bring Carl in to show something. Uh, although Mill has got a thank you. I'll allow Mill to say his thank you while I make Carl a panelist. Hey Mill, how's it going? Just wanted to pop in to say thank you to you guys for all the time that you spend on this helping all of us. I was having some issues I couldn't figure out and I thought I was going to have to come to the morning webinar and bug you guys for help. And instead, I went to the archive that John worked so hard at doing and rewatched a couple of videos, figured out the problem on my own. And I just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for we no, no longer need it, John. For all of us. We're, we're redundant now. <laughs> we've, we've answered you guys are questions. terrific. You're, <laughs> I just can't say thank you enough. You guys are terrific. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Pleasure You're ever so welcome. Thanks, Mel. Carl. Oh, okay. We've got you setting in a second, but um, 
<laughs> now, I, now I am unmuted. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Andy, very much enjoy watching your stuff, watching your code stuff. I, I noticed you were doing a bunch of things with uh, get set window long occasionally. Anyway, I usually write this kind of helper function, get set window long. I can paste this to you where you know you, you pass in the bits you want off and the bits you want on and just do it all in one shot. And so you end it with the complement you know, or it with the of, of what you want off. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All code. And, and then, received. So get. <laughs> You know, you get it, you do the, you strip them, you add them, so that if you wanted to just replace the value, you know, you would, if you wanted to replace the value, of course, you would turn them all off, which is minus one, and then you turn on what you wanted, but, uh, okay, yeah. and then usually write a, a, a caller for that for just uh, GLW style and pass the FEQ, not the handle that then, then calls that thing which actually has no SE. Anyway, so I'll, I'll paste that for you. But yeah, what, quick, I'll see about putting it into the, um, into the common, because that everything is based off common. So, uh, so yeah, that'll come yeah, 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 your common stuff is uh, very helpful. Uh, anyway, so what I, uh, Rick, Rick posted something about tabs that could be on the, Rick posted something about tabs, and I had this program that I made uh, when C9 came out that I just put on GitHub that is called Sheet Tab Prop, probably should have been called Sheet Tab Tool, but I just thought I would show it for a minute here that, that uh, the window designer doesn't really show all of these things. This is everything you can do with a sheet or tab, and so in the middle here you have a, a live preview, you want to put the tabs on the left, you know, put the tabs below, the tabs to the right. So those are four settings. So on the on the left side, you have kind of a friendly user interface. All along the the uh, right side are the actual prop. Prop below. You set prop below on. Now it's below. You set prop below off. You return to above. And uh, in the middle is the code to actually show you. So. That would be a sheet with comma left. That's the actual code that you would write in the window. Uh, and as you notice, as I change the the uh, as I change where the tabs are, it it resizes this rectangle in the middle. So something kind of fun is it works out the tab rectangle, which is a property prop tab rectangle. Uh, it returns. Do I have it here? It's down here. It actually returns a rectangle. So here is the the sheet is at 150.25, but the prop tab rectangle starts at 1.1. So and I actually have a button here to show where the rectangle ends up. So that's kind of fun to, if you're curious about sheets. It's everything sheets. Uh, you can have tabs all on multi lines. You can have them on one line with the with the arrows on the end, or one line with the both arrows on one end. That doesn't work in every well, there it's not overloaded, but uh, you can have the reading down. You can have it upside down. Across. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> useful. Well, uh, it is. So what happens is the license expires, then you set all your tabs to be upside down. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're, we're, your, we're your text, out. you set your text to be right to left for starters. There's lots of things you can do that give people. No, they've got still got full access to the program. You know, you, you they just hate thing. their lives. <laughs> yes, why? You know, it's upside down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a. Oh, you know, you need an update for that, but uh, your license expired. No, no. Are, sorry, are um, you in the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere? Because yeah. this is a southern hemisphere program. So yeah, if, if you if you running it in the northern hemisphere, you're going to need a northern hemisphere license, because then you know then it'll do the right way up. Otherwise, you know. where kind of, you could if you had them below, and then you make it upside down, so you might have a set of tabs above and below, so it's sort of Rolodex style. And then what Rick mm -hmm. uh, posted was the layout attribute. The layout, uh, it makes it right to left reading, for example, for Arabic or Japanese. Well, see the tabs move to the opposite side. If I put them above and don't have it upside down. <laughs> so now you see tab one is on the far right, tab two, tab three, tab four, tab five, mm -hmm. versus if it's not flipped, there's your normal tab one, tab two, tab anyway. So that's uh, something that he sort of discovered. And I noticed it with progress bars. You can have a progress bar that goes 
uh, right to left. And so it's kind of fun. You fill it left to right, but then you could count down right to left and have that. And actually, I have a. <laughs> <laughs> I normally have to just inverse the count, but yeah. yeah very good. Well, but well, you have to inverse the count, and then you also have to. Uh, you have to switch the right to left. Yeah. So here's a progress API repository I have, and I think so. Here you see at the bottom, I click reverse. Let's see if I can bring that up a little more. So uh, this little animation going here, it will click on the bottom left, it will click reverse and you'll see the bar. Anyway, it, uh, this is also another thing. You can have a marquee progress bar that is a style bit you would turn on with set window long. And now you see a, pro a marquee at the top. It's just an animation that, that flows across. But, but back to tabs. So progress bars can be reversed also. And then, it, yeah, I've never used it, but it's kind of cute. <laughs> what have I got here? So uh, it's, uh, it's something I didn't know. Let's, so you can set the, the text to a number of different things, say month names. Uh, and we'll get one more. This minimum tab. Your code, hmm? your code seems okay. So your code box has only got the sheet line; it doesn't actually have the tab lines. No, because the tabs really don't have much that is unique no, no, about them. Don't. You can you can have an icon on them. You know, you can put icons on them. Uh, and but what is uh, what is something new? I discovered uh, min width applies to tabs. And so if I give it a minimum width of 10, well, that's not really going to do anything. And it actually shows that property. Uh, but if I bring it, let's see, 20, eventually I'm going to start making these there. Okay, so now, so now it's making May and June a minimum width of 31 dialogue units. Mm. And that's, uh, that's the way I almost always do that in the code. You actually would say May space, 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 single quote, because, you know, you'll occasionally have a tab that is just kind of short Too narrow. and yeah. yeah that min width would let you do it as shown with code uh, the other way you know if you put 30 up here that that's the tab width so you see it says above and then it's got the 29 that makes every one of them that width well it's really only a one line thing well see so that now january 29 is not wide enough for january uh, min, and so you really do get that width. It is. It's not like that. If you want that width or more, then you use this min width parameter, which doesn't is is uh, doesn't work when you have when you say, "Hey, I want my tabs 25." Uh, another kind of thing that is the default is you see on May, it's got that jagged edge. That's called broken effect. That's a property that's on by default. If you don't like that, I kind of like it. Um, it, it reminds you that there are more tabs, except there's not. I may select one other. Oh, Fortunately, I have to leave you, gentlemen. Okay. I've got another meeting coming up. Have a lovely day, all. Thanks. Cheers. See, you you over in, uh, see you over in South Africa, Mike. Yes. I get, yeah. Mm -hmm. Be there soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see you soon, Mike. Anyway, so that's just uh, that's a new repository that. Uh, it lets you do everything. It uh, originally, Soft Velocity provided a program that showed these these four new tab sheet styles, and I thought that was kind of cute. But I wanted to see more, so I just kept kind of over time adding uh, more and more things. Uh, spread the tabs. Well, hmm, that <laughs> that's interesting. That does not work when you have too many. Well, well, minimum no. width, maybe. Lose, I, lose the minimum well, width. Let's try losing that width. No. Let's, so we go back to, say, 30 no, there. No, make, and them take, yeah. make them both naught. Well. Hmm. Make them both naught. Doesn't seem to work with. Spread is, let's, so if we take off default and now spread. You know, it's probably the, well, it's got to be one line to spread. Bread. Yeah. You know, it has, yeah. So you can do it live at runtime. Uh, no sheet, 
No sheet, if you don't know it, flips, even though this is above, you have to say below to get the tabs above. <laughs> and so it's below and, uh, and, and that's no sheet. Uh, I kind of like that. I use no sheet a bunch for a real cheap um, resizable window where, well, just throw a list, throw a bunch of stuff on the window and then make it full. And then you can have a sheet that doesn't have obvious edges like it would if it was uh, a normal sheet. So, tend to do it. so every property, that's uh, wizard. Mm. There's not that many except they don't always show correctly. In the, and it works out the, the, the other thing it provides is some examples of properties that you might use. So the, the right way to loop through your, the right way to loop through the tabs would be something as you see down here that you use a tab index variable and go from one to the number of tabs. And then prop child returns prop child comma index. So prop child comma two would return the tab FEQ Ooh, of tab I'm, two. I'm, now are you using your shorts there? Yes. I no, I don't think so. If you put a sheet of control on your toolbar, those could be negatives. You are correct. I should have made them short. They tend to. You, they should be make longs, them longs. But but just um, make them long. Yes. But windows. I actually, can... yeah. This is one of the things about U shorts is that uh, there's nothing a U short does that a long doesn't do better. <laughs> just like, life is too short for shorts. Yeah, it is the fastest but, looping variable according to yeah. David Bayless. But in uh, this case, the tab FEQ. Well, yeah, I guess if it was on a, you're right, if it was on a, what, on a toolbar. Toolbar, it, yeah, it I've, I've seen some toolbars quite a lot. And uh, so I'll change that. And, but Mike ran into a problem. You know, the I also go into, well, you can use choice sheet that would return one, two, three, four, five. It's much better to use prop choice FEQ, which I wish was a function, because that would return the FEQ of tab one, the FEQ of tab two, so that you can code something like this that is, yeah. say, if the sheet is tab four, yeah. then because so now, the tabs and, can move around and, yes, and yes. that code will carry on working. Yes, and of course, you wouldn't want to say tab four. If you're going to use it, make it something meaningful, tab by state, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but but Mike ran into a problem where that did not work on a toolbar on an MDI frame in his class because apparently they used to use short maybe, <laughs> but uh, it did. So what he found worked was prop child comma choice sheet. So that of course being one, two, three, four, five and prop child is a nice, is it, it loops through all the children of a parent control. It would work for a uh, an option, a group, even a window, all the children of the window are the first level controls. All the children of a sheet are the tabs. All the children of a tab are the controls on the tab. Um, you know, and then that could have a, an option or a group, which would then have children under that. Yeah. Uh, so it's got some code examples. Yeah, I should fix that. And the other interesting thing is then I decided to make it run under, under any sheet. And the directions were pretty thin, uh, only saying you needed include any for a, for a hand coded program. You know, the directions here that Bruce helped me find. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy once you know it's there, but it did it, it is hidden. Well, not hidden. It's hidden in plain sight. But it just list. It just shows these two lines. In short, that's not enough. You know, you got to have. You need all these libraries. And the easiest way to do it, and I did post this on Clarion Hub, is very conveniently is to just have these pragmas in here and not have to go mess around over here, you know, in the solution and hmm. and uh, add, add that stuff. It's just, because uh, then you can also just comment this whole thing out. So then- Well, I want to say, those are all DLL mode compile libraries. If you were compiling this in a lib mode, you would need to change those. Yes, yes, you're correct. But uh, and I, I say that as a as a not as not as someone in compiles in the mode. So this would be good. But yeah, I mean, it, this is if you're going to do hand coded projects. Oh, you can't. <laughs> you cannot compile in lib mode with any screen. 
It does oh, not okay. provide a, uh, it says it right in the, it says it, it says it somewhere. I, I believe you, I believe you. Okay, yeah, well that simplifies life. Uh, and it, it works. I mean, here it is and, uh, you know, compared to, I bumped up the size a bunch, but uh, this one is 12 point, but uh, you you notice the radios don't line up super pretty. Uh, and hmm, wait, oh, left, below, right. Yeah, it works. Some, I don't know if it does upside down. Yeah, see upside down doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> why? Because they went, why would oh. we just don't need that? Just but, to, no, don't need that. But down doesn't work either. You also can, uh, so down. By down wave one line. So down would be, oh, wait, did it work? Make it, make it one line, make it one line on the right. Guess not. No. But if you go left. Yeah, so then down doesn't, you know, I could see doing something like this where you have, you know, if you had a few tabs, so that's kind of like, a, what are those things you buy at the office store? Um, yeah, tabs, I know the, tabs like that. Yeah, that. Uh, Dex, I want to say it's called a Dex. Something Dex. Okay. Anyway, it was, it's- File effects. I think like the old seller Dex. So once you have, you know, it, it went pretty easy, not today. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't line up super pretty, but it does. I mean, these radios now I didn't, I do have a version of this that I compiled with a, with a, um, a style, a, uh, a manifest. Yeah. Yeah. It can be, it can be fixed with CSS. That I didn't use for this. The, I found that that kind of moved around my, so if I minimize this, I mean, the style is prettier, but it tended to move around some of my radios and stuff. Uh, so you can see that it's it's style instead of. Hmm. Anyway, that's. Uh, cool, thanks Carl. That's what I got. Sheet tab, everything you want to know. And also seeing some of and these, these uh, and it's it's funny when you do those kind of things because you just you you're looking through the properties list and you go, what does this property do? And you put it on there and try it. And, oh, okay, use this one and this one. You get this effect. It's it's a very cool way of discovering what what stuff can do. Yes, yeah, that's what I. That's uh, they're called explorers by some people. Where you just keep plugging away at it. Well, what if I? All right, now that I did that, let's try this. Uh, one that I found I didn't realize was uh, a tab can have an REQ on it, and you can't change tabs if there's any REQ fields that are not filled in. Hmm. Uh, that might be useful in a wizard. Wizard, I to, yeah. Very yeah much I tend wizard. to not like the REQ stuff where the guy just is stuck at a control and and has no indication why. Uh -huh. uh, we need two visuals for that. Uh, <laughs> Well, what I in in the OK button on the templates, I modified it. The incomplete function will also tell you if you have, if you say if incomplete, it will return true if a required field is not filled in, and it will select that field for you. So you can say if incomplete message, please fill in the required field cycle, and so the field is selected when the guy sees the message. It's just four lines of code in the templates, or in the ABC classes, I suppose, if you're so inclined. Yeah. Mark. Hello. Yes. Back. yes um, yeah, if I could just uh, share my screen, it might help for a uh, uh, question I have for Andy. Um, Unmuted. Okay. Um, first off, I want to say if anyone is, uh, I'm using the license levels uh, with Sequin. They're amazing. And also what was amazing is on Monday, I asked the question and Andy uh, showed me how to uh, use uh, the command bars with the 
license levels. So um, I, I spent some time making that work and it, it's really cool. So uh, thank you for that, Andy. And anybody that wants to see exactly what to do, there's just a couple minutes where on Monday's uh, no, we had this webinar, it was covered. So very cool. Thank you. I'm going to, sorry, just one second, I'm going to cut her off. Um, that was Wendy. I'm going to pay for that as well, aren't I? Um, <laughs> yeah, I am going to, and it'll, Bruce, this will be a nice one for you, for yourself. Um, one of the things we do with Sequin is uh, our application, of course, you control your security. You expect to do that. And, and like Mark said, yeah, control the command bar, the content and any of the content really, not just command bars, anything. Um, but the other thing we do is we allow the actual app for our resellers to be rebranded so they can actually plaster it in their own logos, rename it, not really bothered as long as the money comes in. <laughs> and um, uh, basically we use Sequin to actually control that through the licensing, the branding. Yeah. Um, so literally, so I'm going to put a, a demo together of that. Uh, we're going to, we, I promised it for Mark for today. Um, but when I've done that, We'll chuck it on one of the Wednesday webinars so people can see yeah. via the licensing manager attributes. how to yeah, do just it. Just add more attributes. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, these are these are level three, so that's your free level three. Um, these are level uh, six, and these are level nine. So um, I put in just uh, the the, the one line of code that would, would differentiate, and it does show that this is the professional release. So, and here it is professional. So. But yeah, so very good. Thank you so much for that. Um, on to my question is, um, since, well, John kind of brought up some text on buttons and things, and I don't have text here, but I have the text up here. And I wanted to, I felt that the plus and the pen and the, the little pale here was enough um, to, to demonstrate what those are supposed to be. But if I right click and I remove, if I remove these uh, pieces of text, they actually remove from here too. Okay. Yep, and I was I was looking to say remove them from here, but keep them for here. That's um, fine. Was, yeah, it's totally what we do. Yeah, I was wondering if there's a way to do that. Um, we don't. Yep. We don't know. Go cool. to the bar definition. Uh, is it the bar or? Did you want to bring that? A couple options. You want? Uh, you, actually, you don't want to do it on the, the overall bar because you have got some stuff like deposit, which you do want to keep the wording. So we'll do it on the control. So yeah, go go to. Go to where your controls are defined. Okay, my app. Okay. Okay. Now these are cloned, aren't they? But that's fine. Okay. Yeah, go to uh, control and um, where's your insert? Oh. Down a little. Yeah, pad browse, uh, pad to share, um, HTML. Well, those are actually on, um, are they on this control? Yeah, you, you don't want to be on that window. You want to be on the actual. Uh, this, is, this is the host window. Yeah, you want browse links. Yeah, browse links. Come on, bar. Okay. Okay, okay. Now go to your control, go to your uh, uh, scroll down a little, insert. Okay. Now this is being uh, control. Okay. This is cloned. That's okay. Let's have a look at your, uh, it's either image or options then. I forget which one. Okay, image. Nope, not that one. Options. Da, 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 da. Let me have a look at mine. Okay. Just so happens I'm happening to be a similar screen now. Clients. See, normally you would have your setting. Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, this is more of like a just a polishing off of a few things that you know not not going to hold up my release, but 
No, there is a setting, and I can't remember what it is. It's okay. it, it cloned is the one what's what's throwing it. Yeah. Um, why are we? How do I do? It? I have it here in front of me. I just can't see for the. Uh... Yeah, that's fine. Your setting. If it weren't cloned, then it's on the options tab, and you say icon only. Yeah. Uh, with it being cloned, you don't get that. You control it. Oh, I'm gone. Where's the insert? Okay, just go to um, where are you? Go into your window, please, for the for the button. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go to that. I know it's left. I'll have to find it, Mark. <laughs> It, it does okay. it in Toronto. I just can't. I forget what I've done. But yes, that's, um... okay. that's okay. <laughs> that's that's cool. We can come back to that. Um, the other one is um, uh, when we when I make something special, um, it places the the special indicator there, which is the star and the heart. And then when I want to unspecial it, it's simply unspecial, which is great. That works. That was something that that you and Wingle had initially. Um, put in there for me. So I kind of looked and saw what you did, but I didn't do it as well because I wanted to also have a share ability. So I included a share. So it does share, but you can see that the unshare is always, it's staying there, you know, like unshare. Okay, it's so that'll be on your right click in your condition. Yeah. So, so if you go to your report control, go to your right click. Okay. In, in here. Oh, oh in there? That's where the uh, uh, yeah extensions report control down to the bottom, uh, okay. free from bo free from bottom. Okay. Okay. Right click options. Okay. Oh, go so to. About, yeah, probably I don't know oh, tab right. eight, tab nine, all of the, There you go. Oh, row right click. Yeah. Okay. Oh bloody hell! Did we, we must have done it in code. Because you can put conditions on uh, on your actual. Uh... Okay, that's cool. Because uh, yeah, this could could be for another time too, or we could do something offline or the Mondays. Uh, again, not going to hold me up. Just thought it would clean it up a little bit. Um, then, um, where where is your code though? Where on that? Just go to the um, one of those dependent buttons. I need to put a description on those. So yeah, go. Bit further yeah. up, you got record dependent buttons. Yeah. Okay. Do they have conditions on them? No. Yeah, I forget, What's I forget, doing it through uh, code then? I think I did. I did it through code too. I, I looked at your code and said, "Oh, I can do that," and but I couldn't figure out where the code was to take it away. So, um, not a biggie. Um, one that I would like to have uh, work is and it's kind of an odd occurrence because I, I reach a maximum um, as you can see that i've got uh, the indicators that are visual for the user so we have uh, this is a special this is something i can share this shows you the indication that this is a pdf it's a file and this is another indicator i put out here to show this is going to be a private record um, I, I have two more columns that i wanted to add but if I add them, I get a GPF. So I was wondering if there was a limitation to the number. And I even moved this no. one over here because sometimes it was happening here. But um, yeah, I just get, it's a simple thing to do, but when I add one more, I get a GPF. When I um, run it, it compiles okay. But um, because in my record, I had uh, um, additional ones for, whether it was a contact record or whether it was a key record. So. Um, no, I mean, in ours, we have a, the potential for a lot more. Yeah. Um, they have various different alerts like client and uh, financial, medical, Chris, uh, notary, uh, all sorts of alerts. Uh, and they have their own separate indicators and then a, 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 an overall uh, alert indicator. So no, we, we, you can have as many as you technically as you need. Okay. Um, we'll have to hook up and have a look at that then, Matt, because yeah. there's no reason 
Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can definitely. I mean, you seem to handle. I think I fired up with something like seven or eight indicators on the left. Yeah, because I wanted to have one whether it was so the user would know that there was a contact record, contact information on it, or I've included maps now. So whether there was a map associated or geolocation. So those are the only two that I had left to, to make work. Um, otherwise, I understand how it does it, but it just doesn't seem to uh, to uh, do it uh, without a GPS. But we can catch up. That would be great. So, but I know I know you're leaving soon, but so we can um, you can shoot me an email when when it's good uh, to catch up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, just send us an email if I can. Of course, we will. If I, yeah. if, I, if, I, if I can't, then we won't. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No um, problem. Great. And then also, John, thank you for for catching me up with Bijan. Um, I did. <laughs> I actually have two phones now, which is uh, one's a business one. He was texting me on that phone. Um, so um, mm -hmm. that's why I didn't get his message, but we did speak yesterday. So thank you very much for giving me a heads up on that. Not a problem. Okay. Cool. John, right, did you want yes. your code? Sure. Okay, okay. Uh, where are we going to put that? Uh, create command bars. Okay, share your screen. Hold on. Okay, um, go into your uh, embeds and you want uh, the create controls. Uh, create controls? Create command bars. Okay, so after the parent, let's go right towards the end of the okie dokie. Yeah. Um, at the end, let's have a self dot set bar property. Uh, name of your bar. So, what, what's your bar? Project. Project. Uh, project. Okay, okay. Uh, property wants to be text orientation, and you put that in a uh, single quotes. All one word. Yep. Okay. And then comma. And now I'm not sure if you have um, random one comma ten. The equates. <laughs> um, where are we? Come on, bar. Just have a look if you've got this equate. Um, XTP bar text. Yeah, you've horizontal. got horizontal virtual. So, yeah, you, it's, all, it's all auto by default. Okay. Run, run, run. <laughs> run away, <laughs> forest, <laughs> run. We have an app called Forest, so we like to say run, forest, run. Do you know, I don't know if this is true, but I read a fact, a fact the other day, a bit like Sixth Sense, I don't think oh, I won't say it in case no one's not seen it. Um, but <laughs> every you, time, pause, pause, not pause. Seen it by if now. you don't know the spoiler for Sixth Sense by now, you really aren't paying attention. It is the, it's <laughs> the <laughs> most over-spoiled movie ever. To be fair, if you haven't seen the movie by now, let's be honest. Like, yeah. But well, no, just it's like, not going to surprise you. Anything that he's ever touched is red means he's been touched by death. And, and you only when you rewatch it, you see all that. But Forrest Gump, they were saying every time it changes to another era in his life, he's always wearing a blue checkered shirt. Huh. There you it's go. Like, hey. I need to rewatch it just to see that. <laughs> just to see <laughs> just that. To check hey. that out, yeah. It's, it's amazing Maybe that they think about these, some of these movies while they're shooting them. Yeah. And they'll put. There's a lot of that kind of thing. Little consistencies, little bits that make it more real because your brain notices when it's wrong. Right. But yep. you, exactly. they don't have to. It's a bit like special effects. You sh if you if you go come out the movie, go amazing special effects, and they haven't done their job. The movie should not have any special effects. They should just be the story that they tell. Unless it's Marvel, in which case you know you kind of have to assume that the giant green thing isn't actually a giant green thing. Right, John, well done. Your buttons are indeed horizontal text. 
and I don't think that's that much wide. I can't honestly. A little bit maybe. It's too wide now, personally. I mean, it could be a tad skinnier, but it, that's fine. There we go. All right, no more questions. Right. So that means we come to the end of the last open Claren user group meeting ever this month. Yeah. And he, and he thought he was seven. Wow. Indeed. Indeed. We're going to be like sitting here in Cape Town on Wednesday night going, what, what are we supposed to do now? What are we supposed to do? Can't, can't we have a webinar? I mean, come on. We've got this huge setup done. Why, why aren't we webinaring? Come on, guys. You can do or we can just go out for dinner. Want, I feel like you we'll can, just go out for dinner. You can do you can do one if you want to. <laughs> I can run it from yeah. the plane. I could I could try to do no, that. No, no, no. Two weeks time. Two weeks time. Wednesday. Okay, fair enough. All right. So um what's happening? Two tomorrow? weeks time. Three two weeks time. time. Two weeks. No. Two weeks time. Well, Two weeks time today, Andy. Oh, for the actual um, setup, setup day. Of the thing. Yes, got we start. We start the, the next tomorrow. webinar. No, no, no. Setup is in two weeks. Are you kidding me? Two weeks today. Mm, okay. Mm, Andy, exactly. you going to be there? Exactly. No, you're going to be on Safari. You're going to be looking. Uh, at I'll Andy. be back. You, and uh, if it, as, as Bruce said, by the time I get back from there, if you're still not set up, then you've got bigger problems than I can <laughs> solve. <laughs> <bigger. laughs> We'll have problems. Now we want to set up yeah. early. So we should cool. be done. All right. All, all right. right. All right. What's happening tomorrow? There's still things happening. There's still two There's more webinars. There's still Let's two see. more webinars. There's tomorrow and this Friday. So tomorrow mm -hmm. we're doing Net Talk. The last Net Talk ever in the whole of September 2022. Yeah. Just saying. So if you've got questions, that's the place to be. And John, what's happening on Friday? What is going to be the last Friday webinar that people have to ruminate on, gestate on, and just chew the cut about for over a month? Well, it seems pretty epic. Bajan's going to be here. Uh, we're going to be doing TF Plus. He's not here today, right? I don't think he's in the room. He is not. No. All right, so we can talk about him. No, um, we can say yeah, anything, so we Bajan, like. <laughs> say anything we like about him. Uh, Bajan's awesome. So uh, he's going to be doing a session on TS Plus. He's going to be taking Mark's uh, program that he showed last week and putting it up on the web, and, and uh, you can access it through TS Plus, I guess. Cool. And he's going to have four other people with him, he says. Four other people. It's going to be a crowded, a crowded room as he does the presentation. So it should be, uh, it should be pretty good. So it's a good one to end on for the next month, of, for the month of September. The last Indeed. one in the month of September. Yes. That's it. Yeah, it's no way. That's it. Yeah, I, I talked to him uh, yesterday, so I was quite surprised and uh, actually flattered because TS Plus I followed for so long. But uh, he says, "No, I'm I'm ready to buy it right now, and this is what I'm going to use it for." So, can we run this thing on Friday? And I said, "Absolutely." <laughs> I was up yeah, at three this morning, uh, getting some things working and cleaning up. I just wanted just little uh, things. So, yeah, really exciting. So really exciting so thank you yeah it is you bet yeah ts plus is, is pretty good and we've done sessions on them before but they're always improving it and adding new things so uh, that's what we'll learn tomorrow get an update on all those things oh not tomorrow friday yeah. friday yes all right um that's it i think we're done so uh cheers that's everyone that's everybody just waves see you first wave second wave third wave, wave. bye Bruce, John, give me a, a quick Skype. We'll do.